We will now take you east to Greensboro, where the Washington Huskies are set to take on. Greg, it's the first meeting ever between the Washington Huskies and the Connecticut Huskies. Washington, the number 11 seed. Connecticut, the number 2 seed. Connecticut with a win would make it a matchup of one versus two in the East Regional Finals on Saturday as North Carolina won here earlier against Michigan State. Sean McDonough with Bill Raftery. Delighted to have you with us. The double-digit seeds, one of the big stories of the tournament to this point. Washington is one of those, and they're here, led by truly the big fella, as you would say, Todd McCullough. Well, the axiom is you can't teach size. He's terrific down the Look at these numbers, all Pac-10, great offensive productivity, the rebounding and the field goal percentage. He doesn't really push or bang a sleight of hand just to wedge himself in, the ability to turn and convert. He also gets that offensive glass in position and with the ability to stand up straight, able to knock some shots down. And this is the big thing, I think, the defensive for the Huskies. They like to do full court pressure, but it's their half court that's dynamic. They all get back, identify, and then the opportunity. Khalid Alamin, the ability to step in a lane. And now what's terrific, Sean, we've said this all year long. Their perimeter people can all handle. The point man has the ball on the wing. Ricky Moore's going to end up with the finish, but Hamilton also out in the open floor. That's their game. Wide open. Woo -woo. And of course, those Huskies, the Connecticut Huskies, with Richard Hamilton, Kevin Freeman, Jake Bostel, Ricky Moore, and Colin Elamine in the starting lineup. It's Thalo Green, Deion Luton, Todd McCullough, Jan Wooten, and Donald Watts for Washington. The officials are Don Rutledge with Zelton Steed and Ron Foxcroft. Washington in purple, Connecticut in white. It'll be Boskell against McCullough. They'll see a lot of each other around the basket. Washington wants it to be a half-court game, and Connecticut would like it to go up and down. Boskell controlled the tip. And the Huskies, Washington version. Man, man, Sean McDonough. Ricky Moore to Richard Hamilton, the Big East Player of the Year. He's been outstanding in the NCAA tournament. Kevin Freeman. I think McCullough got a piece of that little smooch at the end, but you can see the easy entry to the high post. They established low with Fosco. Kevin Freeman, the first basket of the ball game for Connecticut. He knew McCullough was in the neighborhood and still managed to score. And they're going to double and help Jake Fosco on McCullough. Richmond couldn't do anything to get McCullough away from the basket. The Huskies hope they can be physical with him. The Connecticut Huskies that is and push him away. Donald Watts scores the first Washington basket. And Moore is fouled by Deion Luton, the first foul of the game. Jim Calhoun in his 12th season as head coach at the University of Connecticut. Two victories away from that elusive first trip to the final four. 271 victories at Connecticut. 519 in his career, the only coach in Division I history to win 250 games at two different Division I schools. He got 250 on the button at Northeastern. And there's Bob Bender, the 40-year-old head coach of Washington in his fifth season in Seattle. The one-loss record has improved each year. Lane violation against McCollum. Appreciates how patient they were up in Seattle with him and his program. Ricky Moore gets another chance to make it four to two. And he capitalized. Two points for Ricky Moore, the junior from Augusta, Georgia. And Sean, here's the little two to one. It's passive. You've got a post against it. Tough to dribble consistently. Underneath, McCullough couldn't find a handle. Moore took it away. Connecticut looks to run. Hamilton lays it in. How about that, huh? Little turn. Use the shoulder to ward off. They scrape on the post, turns into a fast break. They get it all off their defense. Richard Hamilton bothered by a bad head cold in recent days. McCullough fouled. Foolish foul by Hamilton. Wasn't much he could have done to have stopped McCullough unless he hit him a lot harder than he did. And Jim Calhoun upset because they don't close on the 2-2-1. This is just lack of attention. They don't get back. Hamilton, that second tier, not recovering and getting in good position to negate that little pass. And McCullough at the line. Todd McCullough's free throw brings Washington within one, but the Connecticut Huskies quickly in transition get the bucket from Ricky Moore. 
And the lead is 8-5 to five for Connecticut. This is regional semifinal action in the East. Howard Elamine fouled after he took it away. Jan Wooten committed his first foul for the Washington Huskies and the second team foul against the men from Seattle. And Sean, that pressure is what Connecticut has been doing all year long. It's very important that they stimulate the offense off the defense. El Amin in the open floor gave it up that time the trap after half court. Washington obviously wants to get down and get McCullough some touches. Strength of the Connecticut team among many. The defense best in the Big East in scoring defense this year, averaging under 64 points per game allowed. Jake Bosco in the lane, not intimidated at all by the seven-footer McCullough. Jake shaking and baking, almost faked himself out of his shot. He's got a little touch and developing it beautifully. Donald Watts used the seven-footer McCullough as he was in trouble. Green, the left-hander, down the lane. Now for UConn, you don't want to give those up, but you like the tempo right now. Now try to wear out McCullough by keeping it an up-and-down game. Something Richmond never really could do. Palo Green fouled by Vosco. Now keep it in the middle of the floor is key for UConn. You know, Washington obviously would like to do a little power basketball. North Carolina winner here early tonight against Michigan State. And the Tar Heels await the winner of this game in the Elite Eight on Saturday evening at 6 Eastern time. 10-7 Connecticut. Two and a half minutes played with the Greensboro Coliseum. More than 23,000 in attendance. These two schools each received 1,250 tickets. Connecticut sold all of its tickets to its fans. Washington returned about 500. They were quickly gobbled up. Watts an air ball. And Moore all over him. Heck of a defender. Alameen about to flick. Blocked. But a foul called by the outside official on Donald Watts. And that gets Bob Bender in the ear of the referee, Zelton Steed. And Sean, look at this with the left hand. Colin Elamine right on the money, and this is a play on. That's just gorgeous basketball. Let him go as he attacks the rim. But the point guy on fire, on fire, giving it up early. The official, about 40 feet from the play, made the call. Freeman gets the bounce. The sophomore from Springfield, Massachusetts, a very solid 6'7, 226. Bounded by wrist injuries much of the year, but as Drew Calhoun says, he's a warrior. Says he plays as hard as any player I've ever had. Tough in that final game against Syracuse. Got hurt. Nice attack here, but Moore the slider. Three minutes in. Elamine, the other guys try at the lob for Freeman and Phalo Green. Picked it off. It's Connecticut by five. And the concern, McCullough now with Vasco with one foul. I would use the big guy. Give him some opportunities. For those who haven't seen Washington play in this tournament, they do have another seven-footer, Patrick Femmerling, on the bench, but he's nowhere near the offensive threat that Todd McCullough is. Femmerling, a good defender and shot blocker. Wooten, high arcing three. McCullough had it knocked away by Vasco. High octane, aren't they? Good ball reversal. Richard Hamilton missed the three. Wooten the outlet. Watts ahead of the pack. Hamilton let him go, and Watts dunked to make it a three-point game. Well, they do attack the basket. You can leak out on occasion. Nice take advantage there. And Watts in the open floor, and Wooten has to be sound. Don't turn it over. Make good judgments for Washington. He's the starting point guard for Washington. Bob Bender singing Wooten's praises for his play in the upset victory over Xavier, and then the second round win over the Richmond Spider. So this is where they can play Elamine off the ball. This is what makes Hamilton so valuable as well as Moore. Wooten knocked it out of the hands of Elamine, and there'll be a timeout with 15.46 remaining in the first half. Well, you mentioned Wooten finding people. Watts, this is a slick little maneuver in the open floor. They get more of these. It'll hurt the UConn defense. At our first time out here in Greensboro, Connecticut has a three-point lead over Washington. We want to remind those of you expecting to see the Maryland-Arizona game that you will be leaving us in a few minutes to see the tip of that game, which is now scheduled for 10:29 Eastern time. We'll keep you up to date on the progress of this game with scoring reports and highlights. And that should be a good one there. A lot of people here in ACC country believe Maryland could pull up the upset of the number one 
team in the West region, Arizona. Alameen tried to hand it off to Suleiman Juan, who just came into the ball game, and he couldn't control it. And it's saved by Dan Dickow, just off the Washington bench. Jan Wooten has gone to the locker room for Washington during that timeout. It looked like he was hit near the eye. Might have required some medical attention. The doctor was summoned out of the stand. Donald Watt scores. How about that challenge? You won the little the quick leak out. Hartnett. Ron Quenzio Hartnett foul by Dion Luton. There's Jan Wooten on tape during the timeout a moment ago. You can see him dabbing at the corner of his right eye. And that gentleman with him apparently is a doctor. The assistant coaches walked out to the middle of the court and waved at the Washington cheering section at that gentleman to come out of the stands so he could take a look at Wooten. Alongside was trainer Craig Morawaki as well. And that hurts them in a sense that they don't have that point leadership. Now, Dickow is a scoring mentality, so he's going to have to play within himself just a little bit just to get a feel of the game. Don't settle for the threes, although he's been making them with consistency of late. On Quenzio Hartnett made the first free throw, and that's his first point of the NCAA tournament. Ordinarily, he gives them a bit of an offensive boost off the bench, but he did not score in the wins against Fairleigh Dickinson and Indiana. That was the path traveled by UConn to reach the Sweet 16. Dickow, a freshman, to head to Todd McCullough. Luton, an excellent three-point shooter, playing that one off the iron, out of bounds to Connecticut. And you notice they're right up on him, too. They're not letting him get those open looks. Five minutes play, Connecticut by three. Is their box set, screen down, pop out. for the high score early and an illegal screen called on Suleiman Juan. Let's check in with Andrea Joyce. All right, Sean, Jan Wooten did sustain an eye injury. He is in the locker room right now. Team doctor Steve Bramwell is stitching it up. It's a cut over his right, right eyebrow. He says he will be back in, though. Jan Wooten, the key, according to coach Bob Benner, the starting point guard, senior from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Dickow tried to feed Thalo Green. Kevin Freeman knocked it away. McCullough waited for Juan to jump and go down and then scored over him. He's got a little finesse in there, doesn't he? Not an overpowering post player, but has a good feel. Five points for McCullough. He averages 18.6 per game. He's coming off a 31.18 rebound game against Richmond in Washington's second round victory. Rochamel Jones off the bench, the bounce to the bucket, 4-2. And you can see McCullough just can't react that extra step across the lane. Good blow by by Jones. Michael Johnson, a freshman, is on the court now for Washington, number 23. And they haven't looked in now. And he's at McCullough's, oh, nice look by Green. Watch the chance for a three-point play. And Thalo uh, didn't sneak a peek at McCullough, but he certainly had pretty good vision under the rim. And all the scramble defensively by UConn backfires. They're trying to harass the passer. And you can see the little slippage as Moore tries to recover. And watch one of those talented performers who's grown in his confidence, I think, under Bobby Bender. Watch with a chance to tie the game. Again, we remind those of you expecting to see Maryland and Arizona. The tip is at 10:29, and we'll get you there in time for the start of that ball game. We'll keep you up to date on what's going on here. Nearly six and a half minutes in. It's Connecticut by one. Howard Elamin, long with the pull-up. Boston fortunate to avoid a foul. I got Bob Bender off the bench. Uh, he is aggressive. Got a piece of that one. They didn't give him the foul. Rashamel Jones with the basket for the Huskies of Connecticut. Bad pass picked off by Hardin. Hamilton running the floor. And Sean, he made that play. He was below the foul line, Richard Hamilton. Scores can sniff it out. I got a chance for a deuce. Let me get the puppies down the floor. Didn't look like the head coach that caused Hamilton to miss the workout yesterday it was bothering him that time as he sprinted the length of the court. It's a good remedy, though. Two points for head coach. Green lobs it into McCullough. He was fouled before the shot, says Zelton Steed. It's on Monquencio Hartnett, his first. 
Oh, you're going to see the great effort now, the ability to get out, and it's all off of defense. Connecticut, just solid understanding. Here's the steal, and Richard, the ability to get down the floor. I mean, this makes the break. Otherwise, it's a one-man break and a balanced floor, but just terrific anticipation by the three, and he just understands offense and how to get out there, and that's what they do. They concentrate defensively and get some open looks. Donald Watts didn't get the left-handed layup to go. The other seven-footer, Patrick Fenneling, now on the floor. Number 22 for Washington, and the Huskies will play it in along the sideline by the UConn bench. Interesting now with Kleber goes into the game to play Femerly. Uh, McCullough gets a blow. You don't want to waste a foul on Vosco. Answer Kleber, number 22. Checking the other 22. Femerly. Dickow. He got knocked down after releasing that three. Seven and a half minutes played. Connecticut by five. And they've got to this one center approach. It's been effective. Johnson short with it. A long rebound out to Montfonzio Hartnett. El Amin acrobatic. Oh, is that pretty. Put it on the floor, he might charge. Just a slide by a Billy. Great control of the upper body. First basket for the freshman from Minneapolis, Khaled El Amin, with 30 points in round one against Fairleigh Dickinson, 22 against Indiana. Connecticut on fire to start the game. Eight out of ten from the floor, and a push on Claver. His first. The open floor, Sean, it's Connecticut's game. The push, the finish, the little kiss, the little guy on fire. The seven point lead for Connecticut is its largest, with just under 12 minutes remaining in the first half. And for those of you waiting to watch Maryland and Arizona, the tip off that game is in about four minutes at 10.29 Eastern time. Jan Wooten back out of the locker room after receiving the stitches, and he's about to take a seat on the bench. Chris Walcott into the game now for the Washington Huskies, number 33. And UConn's done a nice job keeping it a perimeter game with dribble drive. Leon Luton stripped of the ball by Monquencio Hartnett. He's been a lift off the Connecticut bench. Freeman, offensive foul, no basket. Well, Jim Calhoun up pretty quick on that one. Uh, Freeman, you, he gets a little body on somebody. They're going down. Monquencio provides that spark. You noted he hadn't scored in the NCAA until this evening, but defensively usually gets them going. First foul on Freeman, seventh team foul, so it is a bonus situation, but because it was a player control foul, no shooting for Washington. Patrick Fenneling with the basket for Washington. His first basket. He's a junior from Dusseldorf, Germany. His two answered by a three by Khaled Elamine. And Fenneling with a nice little post move. What a counter. Elamine has a wonderful understanding of when to go after you. Walcott scores in the lane. The sophomore from Bellevue, Washington, who walked on to the Washington team last year and is now on scholarship. Alameen might have been hindered by the presence of Femmerling. Here's Watts on the push. Nice dive by Walcott, sets it up for the jumper. Luton's three wouldn't go. He's a streaky shooter and a little bit off to start this game. Traveling the call. Nice play by Thompson, throws the walk. I think you're right. Femmerling got a piece of it. Uh, I guess both clubs are on fire here, huh? Mm -hmm. How about a little D, coaches? Let's step it up a little bit. Two teams that have had much of their success this season predicated on defense. No D and Huskies on either side. Uh, Bobby had a little time at the Duke campus there. They brought out his old uniform, and it still fits. I don't think you could say that from your Syracuse days. Bob Bender played at Duke. His team paid a visit to the Duke campus upon arriving back here in North Carolina. And Coach Bender put on his uniform from the late 70s. The players loved it. The uh, comment by Donald Watts was I loved interesting. It. He said it looked like it would cut off your circulation. Of course, the uniforms were nowhere near as baggy as they are these days. And I guess Mike Krzyzewski had write-ups from his playing days as well. 
Really happy for yeah, that's terrific. You could get into those shorts. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can still get into those yeah, shorts. Yeah, funny. <laughs> They'll still be as tight like as they always were. <laughs> Bob Bender played at Duke and spent six years as a coach and assistant with Mike Shashevsky before becoming the head man at Illinois State. Then on to the University of Washington. They remain very close. And Bill Forster was his coach in those days. Credits a lot to his mentors. Well, this is Mike's contribution is like Bob Knight. Bob Bender been working for a couple of years as a fundraiser in the athletic department at Duke. Under Tom Butters, the athletic director, thought he might go to law school. And then Mike Krzyzewski offered him a job. Beverling the block. Hey, he is an obstacle. That's his second one you mentioned earlier. Good kick. Ball caught open. Voskel came over, couldn't block the shot. Voskel toppled to the court, and Walcott has given them four points off the bench. And what a nice feel that time because the double came. He just looked over his shoulder. Nice dish. Well, it was a seven-point Connecticut lead. is down to two with 9.20 left in the first half. Nice hand hedge, but it cost him. Femerling got out in the passing lane, didn't recover. Nice slippage by Jake Voskel. Ricky Moore found him. Voskel has four points. He's a sophomore from Katy, Texas, just outside Houston. His father and the uncles were all in the lobby today. They had their game faces on. <laughs> I don't think you'd like to fool around with them, Sean. No. I know you're tough. Jim might have been the shortest member of the family we saw at the hotel. <laughs> Emerson was upended. The ball went out of bounds and will be played in by Connecticut. And Washington, their little version of defense as they try and use the post rub. You see, Femmeling had his hand out. That's a hand hedge. Then trying to recover blind to the basketball. Nice slip to the goal by Jake. Moscow from a basketball family. His dad, Joe, played at Tulsa in the early 70s and is one of that school's all-time leading rebounders. They played on four straight state championship high school teams in Texas. Great graduate. There's Freeman. He does that. You know how tough he is around the glass. Stepping up his offense this year. Keep working this summer on that jumper. Tim Calhoun believes the only thing lacking from Freeman's offensive game is confidence. Luton from the elbow. Tough shot. He, he doesn't lack confidence. 75 of their 145 threes generally deeper than that, but they're forcing him to put it down. That was the first basket for Luton, the sophomore from Dell City, Oklahoma. He averages 15 per game. And maybe he was a center in high school, too, Sean. I mean, imagine developing an outside game like this. Boy, a tough bounce pass. Luton got in the way. It went out of bounds off Luton. It will be Connecticut's ball when we come back. John McDonough with Bill Raftery and Andrea Joyce back at the Greensboro Coliseum. 7.52 left in the first half. Connecticut leads by four, and the Huskies will play it in with 16 seconds on the shot clock. And Sean, this is a very good offensive team on inbounds. They score. They certainly, here's a double screen, have worked diligently on this. Richard Hamilton shot spun out to Todd McCullough. With Rochamel Jones. Walcott shot short. Jake Boskell ripped it away from his own man and he hurt Jones in the process. Rochamel lying flat on his back, holding his forehead. Now that's a shame. Inadvertent, but you love guys hustling. He's saying he's okay, reading his lips, but Jake, very strong, attacking the rim there. Now you knew Jim Calhoun up in Boston at yes. Northeastern when he started. Very successful coach for 14 years at Northeastern University. Also known as the Huskies. For those of you just joining us, 732 remaining in the first half. Connecticut leads by four. Rochamel Jones lying on the court. He was hit, it seemed by his own man, Jake Boskel. There's the Ooh. elbow to the jaw. Ooh. Is that painful? Now, I know you never got that close to the rim. You would have gotten a rash. You were leaking out for a fast break, but <laughs> Rosh pays the price for involvement on the offensive glass. 
Jones, a junior from Port Chester, New York, went to high school in the state of Connecticut at Trinity Catholic. And was the Connecticut High School Player of the Year three years ago at Trinity Catholic in Stanford. And Joe Sharp's been busy, the trainer, particularly the last couple of weeks of UConn. This is the University of Connecticut, but no Connecticut natives on scholarship on the basketball team. Jones did play high school basketball in Connecticut, but he's from New York State, just across the border. Three second violation as Freeman gets stuck in the lane. Both teams shooting very well. Washington at 55% and Connecticut at 73%. Turnovers are even. Donald Watts, 10 points to lead Washington. Hey, Connecticut trying to take the guards out of the game, put it in Luton's hand. And Richard gets the small change, little nickel dimer on the dribble penetration. Two fouls now on Richard Hamilton in nine against UConn. Richard Hamilton will go to the bench with two fouls. Howard Elamine is coming back into the ball game. It's Elamine with Moore, Hardnett, Freeman, and Voskel for Connecticut. One and one for Deion Luton. And Sean, the, not necessarily the highlight because the games are the highlights, but meeting Marv Harshman yesterday, spending mm. some time. Uh, Bob, there's so many, Bob Bender has so many nice things to say about the former head coach of the Huskies in Washington. Marv Harshman, now 80 years old, here to cheer on the Washington Huskies tonight. Bob Bender called and invited him to make the trip with the team. Alameen from the elbow. Did you see him yo-yo, though? He had the big guy on the string. Made him think he was going to the goal. Got the open look. Good use of the bounce. Donald Watts. And Jake just for McCullough too close to make a pass. Luton, that's a three. It's going to be barely a rim grazer. Watts out of bounds. Or did he get a timeout? He was out of bounds. CBS Sports Line is the best place to follow all the March mayhem, get real time scores, updated brackets, game previews, and analysis, interviews, and more. Keyword CBS Sports Line on America Online. What's the question I have is why does Washington have the ball? Did well, I think they're saying Jake touched it, and, it and they're out. just checking to see if it hit the rim, is I think this question here. It did hit the rim. Luton <laughs> shot it. Mm -hmm. We barely grazed the rim. Luton gets it into Watts. They left the shot clock at 32. McCullough right over Voskel, who stands 6 feet 11. Nice play by Luton here on the inbounds. Break down on the inbounds pass by UConn. And Washington, once down seven, is now even at 31 with 6-12 left in the first half. Now that should teach Jake Voskel, though, to check a guy out further from the rim. He's just too big. Bear in mind, Hamilton, the Big East Player of the Year, is on the bench. With two fouls, so Adela Mean, the Big East rookie of the year, to the basket, and he now has nine points. He's no rookie. Not the way he plays. Just a nice understanding as he gets near the rim. McCullough short with a shot. Bosco to miss. Freeman came to double team McCullough and made it a tough effort for the junior from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Freeman fouled. Uh, Jake's got his hands full. Vasco defensively trying to keep the big guy away. Now he hedges, and all of a sudden, the disadvantage, seven feet tall. Ooh, you win a lot of coaches' hearts when you're that tall. But the inbounds pass, you've got to be alert. Nice play. And that's all from tape, too. Vasco maybe floats that pass or just anticipates his guard's going to get to it. Good read by Luton. Now Freeman to shoot two. He has six points. Foul was on Thalo Green is first and the fifth team foul in Washington. Voskel goes out with Hardnett. Jones who's bandaged under the right eye where he took Voskel's elbow a moment ago is back in. 
Washington's been very sound on the offensive end, Sean. They're not rushing things. They're not turning it over. The press full court. They've been in the right spots, not doing anything silly. During the Bob Bender era, this is a team that has been plagued chronically by turnover difficulties. Rocks. Oh, feed from the wing from Green. High voltage attack that trip. What did they break apart that 2-2-1? Two, two, that is deep. And it hurts. <laughs> oh my goodness. Nylon. Holland Elamy now has 12. That was an NBA three and then some. Connecticut by five. We approach five minutes left in the half. McCullough sent Suleiman Juan sprawling. <laughs> you think he did a little dive on that play? I'm not sure, but Jim Calhoun thought there should have been a foul. You notice Jim looks at us sometimes as if uh, we can help him out. Yeah, maybe we would just <laughs> confirm or uh, disagree with his opinion. Now here's where they pull the shirt. Now that's that America's play where they screen the screener. Alamine came up the lane and Juan maybe with the steps. Now they got an offensive curl. Now that's tough after the play at the other end. Now Jim Calhoun's turning to everybody who listens. All the NCAA people have headsets on over the the committee. Oh, what a bad seat. He looked over here on the uh, last non-call and McCullough knocked Juan down. Then he turned to Terry Holland who's the NCAA committee representative here along with Mike Trangisi. And uh, Terry is continuing to watch the action. Nice play. A little and there's the charge unfortunately. Oh you jump stop you got a basket. Well Thalo Green would see blue on that kind of play. Oh, they had just decimated the pressure defense and McCullough waiting, begging, urging the dish. And then the knockdown. Two fouls on Thalo Green. A mock cheer went up from the Connecticut partisans for the officials after that call. 16 fouls now on Washington. Connecticut's been called for 10, so that's already the double bonus. Elamine, well defended that time by Wooten, who made it a tough shot. And Wooten couldn't control it. Along the sideline, looks like he took his eye off the ball. There's Terry Holland, the athletic director at the University of Virginia, looking for a head coach. Yeah, he never looked my direction at all. No discussions. <laughs> <laughs> but he wisely has the headset on when you need Jim Calhoun. First of all, it'd be tough to interpret when he's excited. That quick speech delivery. Coach Calhoun speaks as rapidly as anybody in the coaching profession. And a back screen and then a rescreen. Alamine got a three. Claver kept it alive over the seven-footer McCullough, but it's controlled by Donald Watts. So now a three would tie the game for Washington with under four minutes left in the half. Committee's got to feel good about the games this year, the excitement in the NCAA. Terry and Mike part of that. CM Newton run the show, Kentucky AD. Nice spin out. Look at the help. Now that's great defense. Even if they foul, and that's what you want to do with the spin out by McCullough, and that worked the other day in Washington, D.C. And Jim Calhoun looking on in disbelief, if not horror. And Dave Andrew Claber called for his second. Associate head coach Dave Lato with the instructions. So now it's McCullough. At the line, he's been the NCAA leader in field goal percentage each of the last two seasons. And he's also a respectable free throw shooter at 70 percent. He made two. And we have another good one. It's the Huskies of Utah by one. Connecticut shooting 67% here in the first half, but with just a one point lead with three and a half minutes left. The Pizza Hut Scholar Athletes of the Game are Todd McCullough, a speech and hearing science major with a 3.14 GPA, and Richard Hamilton, a communications major with a 3.0 grade point average. Pretty impressive when your best player mm -hmm. is one of your best students. Real solid young guy. A little stagger for the point guard, a little step in too. Wooten, great anticipation. Said the other day, played a little bit with Brevin Knight. has got a little bit of Brevin's game too. Former Stanford, now Cav, backcourt point director. Now, would you say that's chunky? That solid frame? Uh, yes. 
But it's not. He's very solidly put together, we are told, by uh, Jim Calhoun and others in the Husky camp. There have been other guards with that body type. Uh, We've been very successful. You think of John Bagley from mm -hmm. his conference, the Big East, Pearl Washington, another out of the Big East. John Gwynn, a little bit uh, stocky in the old days. But uh, Jimmy was telling us both yesterday, he likes to eat. That's why he has to work so hard. But he's got an inner strength, too. Not afraid to take on the big bodies he gets around the 10. And there's 13 points here in the first half. With the sense, as he said many times, he believes that he could be the key component who could help get UConn to that first ever Final Four appearance. UConn isn't missing anything, free throws or field goals. They're 10 out of 10 from the free throw line now. But Washington is still within three. Now whoever steps up defensively, Sean, you got to challenge shots, both shooting the ball well, and an effort has to be made at either end. Halo Green, he's done a good job of feeding McCullough, Bosco fronting McCullough. And that's what they want to do, and help him if he does make a catch. He's forcing him high. And I think Freeman can shade a little bit. Well, you got to love being a shooter with McCullough on the team. Tough pass, Green, throw it to McCullough as he was all tangled up with the defense. And a foul. Well, that's on Green, it's his third. Yeah, that hurts too. And Moore pushed the issue, but post defense, the most important part of your man to man coverage. And Jim Calhoun said we want him front. Look at this body all the way around the lane. Body by Jake. And no monthly subscription. A little bang and moving him forward. He's getting a little shade there as Freeman comes down. And the ability to shoot that jumper, even here, as you noted, a tough guy. Take that little jumper. You got the big guy at the rim. And don't force the issue. Make it a catchable pass. Well, he's stronger than he was when he arrived on campus, but still not extremely strong. Moore missed the front end of a one and one. Walcott couldn't garner the rebound. Watts did. Gray now on the bench with his three fouls, replaced by Walcott, who gave them some quality minutes earlier in this half. Luton for the tie. He's way off tonight. Walcott got the bounce. And Freeman laboring a little bit. He did not check out that trip. Washington within one. Alameen. Rebound McCullough and a chance for the lead for Washington. Got to run something. They can always get that jumper. Two minutes left in the half. Watts stripped by Jones. That hit Watts' leg. Good call by Ron Foxcroft. Sure was. And Donald playing well within himself. That time, a little one on one in the three second area. Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Dean Smith will get you updated on all the tournament news, the scores, and highlights. A look at the Maryland Arizona game from the West. That's all coming up on Pennzoil at the half. It's a little play to run for him with a little flair. Alameen, the banker. A little kiss. And that's just beautiful. He can play off the ball because Moore can run the show. That's Hamilton's play generally. Alameen averages 16 per game. He has that here in the first half tonight. McCullough forced away from the bucket by Boskell. Boskell's done a decent job. Alameen feels it. Not that time. He hustles after his rebound. Oh, Looked like the ball slipped out of his hand just as he went to put up that layup. They got, they got it out. Washington has numbers in its favor. Luton still having a difficulty shooting the basketball. Moore's done a nice job with the dribble shot. He puts his prize a little bit. Nice extra pass to Freeman. And the call of the block. And called for a foul. And Bob Bender is living. And Sean, that's all Ricky Moore. He pushed the basketball. The defense collapses a little. Even though he didn't get anything, the ball reversal. And right there, off the jumper, the dump down, the alert hands by Freeman. And McCullough from the rear. Do you see why Bobby Bender is a little irate? Let him play a little bit under there. Colin McCullough is his first. Nine 
team fouls. Freeman makes the first of two. Nine points without a rebound for Freeman. Five out of five from the line. Here comes Antrick Klaber back into the game. So Connecticut is maintaining the lead with Richard Hamilton on the bench for quite a while now with two fouls. With the two, and he's also rotated centers beautifully, Jim Calhoun. Well spaced, well rested, different looks. And they've attacked this 2 to one and gotten layups. And a nice post and turn now. Get the color touch, even though Jake's played him well. There's a shape up in the lane. Pretty. The running left-handed shot wouldn't go for McCullough. Connecticut could take it down almost to the final buzzer of the half. But what a nice edge when you have Elamine there. Jim Calhoun didn't even have the signal. Shooter late enough to get a possible tip, but not let them get a run out. More nice. Let's go with that. More and more. And Bender upset, I think, over the last one on McCullough. Not that one. But just extraordinary ability with the bounce. A little ecstasy at the end here. Suck him to you in this. Go up strong, Big Jake. And that's one of those other, and you can see Bob Bender saying, okay, let it go. Well, it, he has reason to be upset about those last couple of foul calls. Foul was on Walcott, his first. What happens, as we've seen over the years, the anticipation of action mm -hmm. is what instigates the whistle. Swallow that P once in a while. Now an eight-point lead. Seven unanswered points from Connecticut. This lead matches the largest Jim Calhoun's team has enjoyed. 3.3 seconds. They get off a final shot of the half for Washington. And that's a tough place to inbound it with a thought toward a shot. Thompson, the heave at the buzzer. What a half for Khaled el -Amin. 16 points. And at the end of the first half, the score is Connecticut 47 and Washington 39. Here's Andrea Joyce. All right, Coach, you shot pretty well in the first half, but what kind of defensive effort will you look for in the second half? Well, the last four minutes we played great defense. The first uh, 16 we didn't, and we gave too many points to the big guy inside. Richard Hamilton on the bench with two fouls. He's been suffering from a cold. Do you sense that he's any sluggish at all? He, he, right now he's very weak. He's not playing, uh, so we're trying to win right now without him. We'll probably start him second half, but right now he doesn't feel real well. All right, good luck in the second half. Thanks, Coach. Sean? Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, and Dean Smith will be along with Pennzoil at the half right after this message and a word from your local station. Halftime in Greensboro. Washington trails by eight a moment ago. Andrea Joyce spoke with Coach Bob Bender. Coach, 16 points for El Amin in the first half. Is he your biggest concern in the second half? He's the big concern because he's got it going. You see his confidence, him scoring. The problem is that if we do come to help and the things, adjustments that we might want to do, he's good at finding people, and that's what I think really allowed them to make the run here at the end of the half. He got in the middle of our defense. We've got to be able to contain his penetration. All right, good luck in the second half. Thanks. Khaled El Amin led all scores with 16 points in the first half. It's Washington's ball to begin the second half. Thalo Green with the ball is three fouls. Deion Luton needs to get on track for the Huskies. He was just two out of six in the first half. And they're just switching the exchanges outside, Sean. And McCullough not able to get anything in there as Jake keeps pushing him out further. Jan Wooten with 10 on the shot clock. Wooten walks Luton, McCullough, and Green. The same fives from the start of the game begins the second half. El Amin. And a foul with four seconds on the shot clock. A long way from the bucket as he sensed Wooten was about to get past him. First half stats. Connecticut shot a robust 62%. And as they tried to inbound the ball, Ricky Moore called for a holding foul. He waved his hand in disgust at Don Rutledge, who glared back at him. 
Good thing he turned away. <laughs> Don't want to show guys up, particularly that guy. Pretty competent official. Two McCullough's deep. On more and two on the team. Wooten, tough shot, but he made it. Him stepping up said it would help their cause. Somehow, Sean, they got a screen or move across the lane and time the duck in for McCullough. That basket was the first by Wooten. Elamine with more. Voskel, Freeman, and Hamilton does open the second half, as Jim Calhoun said he would. Foul on McCullough, his second. And we check in with Andrea Joyce. All right, Sean, as we mentioned earlier, Richard Hamilton is suffering from a cold and an upper respiratory infection. Trainer Joe Sharp spent halftime filling him up with fluids. Hamilton is sluggish and feeling tired. Joe Sharp told me that that condition is not helped by the fact that it has warmed up in the arena. So they're just going to play him as long as he can play and then as long as he's not too tired out there. Back to you guys. Nella Mead at the line. They charge the foul to Wooten. His third. He does put pressure on people. He had Wooten underneath him and McCullough looming there. Uh, Bob Bender obviously disturbed the way they played this sensational freshman. Great feel. They're clearing out for him more than they do naturally when Hamilton's on his game. And apparently they have a tough time. Get back to what Andy said. Controlling the temperature in this building because yesterday when the team's practicing here it was freezing. Several of the coaches complained about how cold it was. And now tonight, as Andrea says, it's very warm in the building. Luton stopped on the drive by Hamilton. Of course, the fact that there are 23,000 people in here today who weren't here yesterday makes a difference but uh, there is a dramatic difference in the temperature in this building yesterday versus today and a dramatic difference in the defense the last four minutes Jim Calhoun alluded to the first half and right now they're just shutting down the dribble once it's picked up they're denying the passes extraordinary defensive surge right now by UConn Connecticut by seven a minute and a half gone by in the second half Moore slipped and got called for a travel a nice play by Watts uh, talked about his Terrific sound play. Washington Prep Player of the Year. That time defensively helping out. Ten turnovers by Connecticut late in the first half. And the other game going on at the moment out west. Arizona by 11. Now by nine. Oh, what a perfect trap spot. Luton. That's a three for Dion Luton. And that's the danger that 2-2-1. I think you can't be better off half court running their trap. Hamilton off for Freeman. Impressive that Connecticut could have such a good offensive game when Hamilton is ailing and obviously a little bit off his game. And they are all stepping up just a little bit. Nice little penetration. That didn't look like a little sneezy sniffle maneuver. Six for Hamilton. We would like you to explain what that maneuver is. Well, you, you probably miss school with a little sniffle, I'm sure. Never. One of those types. But he, uh, a gamer. Nice step in there. McCullough, that time Bosco fronted McCullough. They locked it over his head. And Todd has 13 points. Nice lift to the defense. So when they did front, they didn't get the support. Washington hanging in there, down by eight on a couple of occasions, including halftime. Wooten hurried to deflect it out of bounds. Well, some nights you need a little hanky when you're playing basketball and you don't feel yourself, but uh, once you get the pill in your hand, that's enough medicine. A little nice slide in the lane by Hamilton. Elamine missed the three. Vosco went after the rebound with McCullough. Outlet pass, locked it for Luton, it was not a good pass. A nice play by Moore with the swipe. Hamilton lays it in. Ooh. He just steps it up a frame. Open floor, feels he can score, just turns it up. Bob Bender said yesterday the key for Washington is to value the basketball, and that fluttering outlet pass does not equate with valuing the basketball. A little motion and McCullough out screen. He should get himself down box to box. They just did a nice job lobbing before. Here he comes. Wait for him. Wooten guarded by Elamine. Shot clock at eight. 
Wooten. Short with that shot. Out of bounds. Last touch by Washington. Uh, the ability to find guys, and I'm so impressed with Delamine I mean, giving it up early. This has been good judgment all season long by the work, and quite a finish for the Big East all year long, Richard Hamilton. More to Elamine. Well, Hamilton is running the floor just a lot better right now. And he was fouled on the way up, and Hamilton will shoot two. Uh, Jake Vosco has kept McCullough busy. He got a piece of that one, but Jake has been moving him from box to box, up the lane, stepping out a little bit. And McCullough not as intimidating a force as he was the first two games of the tournament. Thalo Green now has four fouls for Washington, so Bob Bender's going to take him out. Chris Walcott ready to check back in. Hamilton with nine points. Green departs with four fouls. He moved into the starting lineup with three games to go in the regular season, and Washington has not lost since. Two free throws by Hamilton, and the lead goes back to eight for Jim Calhoun's Huskies. Washington Huskies trying to avoid enduring the first loss by a Pac-10 team in this NCAA tournament. The Pac-10 is 8-0. and all. Washington is losing at the moment. Arizona is leading Maryland. North Carolina and Utah have already advanced with wins tonight. They're on to the Elite Eight. Timeout Washington. The Huskies couldn't get it in. And that's what UConn does so well. I mean, it just sets you up after a timeout. You think you can relax a little, bring it over to the timeline. And Bob Bender said that Arizona was a team that played like UConn, pressed and got after it. And you wonder about the fatigue factor for Washington. They came from Seattle to Washington, D.C. last weekend to play in the first round, and all the way back to their campus. Four of their players had finals on Monday. When they got back on the plane Tuesday, a plane given to them by the Seattle Supersonics. And flew back cross country to Greensboro. More than 8,000 air miles traveled by the Huskies in the NCAA tournament. And then they had some exams here too, Sean. They were proctored in the oh. hotel yesterday. Fifteen forty-five remaining. Connecticut leads by eight, matching its largest lead. And Jake Bosco has just been called for a second foul for Connecticut. It's the third team foul against the Yukon Huskies here in the second half. Bob Bender, despite the travel of his Washington team, says he's seen no evidence in practices of fatigue setting in. Says they're young and they're running on adrenaline. Yeah. Luton fouled before the shot. Feels are very mature. Nice back up by Luton there. It's been the defense of UConn, Sean, that has stepped up and made it tough for Bob Bender. Offensively, I don't think they've been able to get the wall because of Jim Calhoun's defense to McCullough. Vosco bodying out. They're supporting when he fronts. They're occasionally doubling. It's been disturbing their offensive flow. McCullough. Well short of that shot. Just did touch the front rim. Ricky Moore using a Vosco screen. That was a two-point try. Rebounded by Jan Wooten. It's Jan Wooten, Donald Watts, Deion Luton, Chris Walcott, and Todd McCullough for Washington. Nice pass. Wooten to McCullough. Well, Wooten with a wonderful find. Nice penetration. The Jersey guy on the money. And McCullough has, has terrific hands, Sean. He's shown that all through the tournament. Brief breather for Colin Elamine, but he's about to come back into the ball game. In the moment, it's Moore, Jones, Freeman, Voskel, and Hardnett. Nice play. Short corner against the zone. Jones hit the deck hard, and they wanted to foul on McCullough. Watt steps into a three that wouldn't go down, and Hardnett rebounds. Do you know any other Monquencios? No. Yeah. I don't need to play defense like he does. Yeah, this zone, I thought, gave him a little trouble the last trip, a little short corner. They're forcing the outside shot. That's why they're trying to get Hamilton El Amin back in here. And Watts goes down and plays the box and also has the top to cover. Freeman ran into a double team. 
Good patience by UConn, but now the shot clock is at five. Montrencio Hartnett. Nice read there. The penetration set it up. He got to the gap. The cue. The only scholarship senior on the Connecticut roster. Blocking foul called on Rochamel Jones. And Connecticut, the youngest team in the Big East, has a very bright future with this nucleus. How about the little pump fake sets it up and then the ability to get into the lane. And McCullough, that's something he doesn't do well. Step to help out. Femmeling in now, McCullough out, maybe for that reason, a little fatigue. Bob Bender noting it. You can't go coast to coast without a turnover or two, huh? Mm -hmm. and we know what it's like to take a red eye on occasion. Emerling already a factor as he kept alive the miss by Luton. Walcott followed his own shot, and he came away from the pack with the ball. So great hustle by Chris Walcott. Brings a little juice to the floor for Washington. Watts, that's a shot that bothers a lot of coaches. He stepped right inside the line and then took the longest possible two-point try. Watts down the lane, will it count? Yes! Well, you mentioned the jumper, and they know he can make it. He can draw people and slick saying, that's my son out there with that maneuver. The only thing that upset him all year long was he shaved his head and slick didn't go for that. He didn't go for the headband, but boy, did he go for this little kid's semi-hook. Donald Watts, for those who haven't seen Washington play earlier in the tournament, is the son of Slick Watts, the former fine guard for the Seattle Sonics, who led the NBA in steals and assists in 19. 76, he's a very vocal supporter of his son and the rest of the Washington Huskies. Washington refuses to disappear. Now down five. Hard now. Very tough shot. Hamilton the save. And Walcott hit the floor to get it to Watts. Here's Luton for the dunk. And Watts in the middle of it. Anything good is generally Donald Watts. 12.58 remaining in the second half. Connecticut has called a 20-second timeout as Neon Luton's breakaway dunk brings Washington back within three, five unanswered points by the Washington Huskies. Well, good things happen. They went to the zone and confused Connecticut just a little bit. And maybe a little step there as uh, Neon should have put the one bounce down. But nevertheless, a little juice. Maybe Walcott's insertion, Feverling's little addition, he contributed with a little slap to keep it alive. Interesting team, Washington. There isn't the full court pressure of the pizzazz of a North Carolina or a UConn, but they hang around, yep. they're solid, little motion, box to box by the center. Washington really doesn't do anything that dazzles you or catches your eye, but they are effective and they win. Mm -hmm. And what a time of the year to put them in the victory column. Much of the year they used the two seven-footers together in the starting lineup. We have not seen that in the NCAA tournament. Hamilton, another big three when they needed it most. He had two key threes down the stretch against Indiana. And Watts just got fatigued running after him. Luton with the handoff. There's Walcott. He's looking for Hounds. The officials conferring, and the outside official says it should be Connecticut ball. Now Walcott in the middle of the mix there. Bob Benderfield, and he's not getting the shape. And I think the referee's got this one right. Maybe a little piece. What do you think? Close? Look like you can see the maybe a wash on that play. Andrew Klaber in the game. For only a moment, he's back. On the bench now to be involved in that close out of bounds. Ella Mean. Oh, oh does he have great glass shots? Don't play pool against that guy. He can kiss him off any rack. He's familiar with the glass shots. You're familiar with the shot glass. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> it's like as they go to post guy. It's easy for them to catch the ball in the low box, the two big guys. I, I don't understand why they'll initiate, get it in, and if they don't have anything, let them kick it out. Suleiman won back into the game. The sophomore from Senegal. Time now for the Microsoft Data Bank. Most Sweet 16 appearances in the 90s. Seven for North Carolina. Connecticut, part of a three-way tie for second with six. 
The Huskies have also made the most NCAA tournament appearances without ever getting to the Final Four. This is the 20th time UConn's been in the tournament, hoping that this will be the year they advance to the final weekend. And Jimmy Calhoun's done a great job rotating the post guy. Juan in there now, just trying to fill the reach here, rebound on the defensive end, shot block, and play Femerly. He had an offensive pick in the first half. He's got to make sure he stands still on any screens. Shot clock running out is Moore. Steps to the elbow. No rotation on that shot, and Watts pulled it off the rim. The eight-point margin matches the largest for UConn. And a holding foul called on Elamine. Got that hand right in there. It's eight team fouls on Connecticut. Just two called against Washington. The second personal on the freshman El Amin. So here's a tough assignment for him with Luton. He knows he can get up over him, elevate over him. He has to hug him, put that hand right on the face. Deion Luton shooting a one and one. 11 points. For Luton, now 12. You know, it's a hard game if you can't see the rim. And mm -hmm. right here, you can, oh. that makes it tough. That makes it awfully hard. <laughs> that reminds me of the old days with Good. Muhammad Ali used to hold his opponent a little bit. I thought you were going to say the Three Stooges. <laughs> <laughs> Keep in the face. The old face rake. 11-11 remaining. Bellamine and the Huskies of Yukon up six. S Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Bud Light, BMW, and by Microsoft. 11-11 remaining. Connecticut by six. Huskies still shooting 58%. And only missed two of 18 free throws. Washington the edge inside, as you might expect, with a 2-7 footer. Sean McDonough with Bill Raftery. Washington has not had the lead at any point in this game. What do they need to do to get over the hump here? Well, without McCullough in the game, it's not as good a threat or tough a threat in the box area. So I think they've got to do a lot of dribble drive, Luton and Watts in particular, and keep mixing up the defense. Maybe throw a little zone on occasion, particularly when Hamilton is out. Right now, Watts is tagging him. Look at him use the feet. He uses bumps. There's a screen and a screen down. you got to come running for him. Hamilton, the bounce to the bucket, and the miss. And the rebound by Watts. Hamilton down behind the play. It's five on four, Washington. Luton. Not very lucky. Walcott active again on the glass, but couldn't control the rebound. Held ball, Connecticut ball. Right there, Luton with a spectacular little pull-up, and as you mentioned, got the little rattler to go against him, but Juan continues. The center rotation has been so favorable for UConn. I mean, against these big guys, you got to keep putting fresh bodies in, and well, I mean now, a little rest is all he needs to get energized. Bob Bender said they needed to do a better job in Alameen. They have, although he's seen a couple of stints on the bench here. Jim Calhoun getting him rest. Chance for three for Suleiman Wong. Now that's Richard Hamilton at his best. And he knows that they're going to attack him. And on occasion, that suckage ability is going to get people free. You're a good teammate when you love to give it up. And one more time as Suleiman gets in position. Draw, drive, and put it to the big fella. A little swooch at the end, favorable for UConn. Two fouls on Walcott. One, not an artistic success, but effective nonetheless. And the lead is nine, the largest for Connecticut, nearly midway through the second half. Suleiman Wan's a sophomore from Dakar in Senegal. Watts had a shot blocked by Moore. Wan played only one year of organized basketball before coming to Connecticut. That was at Redemption Christian Academy in Troy, New York, 1995 and 96. And he sat out last year as a partial qualifier, got his academic house in order, and joined the team midseason this year. Watts the miss, Watts got it back, now it's on the floor to Hamilton. That whole trip was Ricky Moore, sensational defensive stops. Hamilton's pass blocked off the glass by Walcott, Wooten ahead for a two-on-one. Watts with Luton, Elamine defending. 
Pretty slight of hand the open floor. Watts has got himself a solid basketball game. He fed Luton for the dunk that has Washington back within seven with 9.20 remaining in Greensboro. Watts has got to play both ends of the floor. Chasing Hamilton, not easy. Hamilton shot was well short. Kevin Freeman the rebound, and there was a foul on the floor. Do me a favor, Sean. Don't fool around with Kevin Freeman. Don't get him upset. He was just so physical on that particular play. Uh, the counter, a good defensive stop, and the nice feel here. The slide by so that Watts doesn't charge. You surprise more guys, don't do it. Good players understand. And Luton with the send it in at the end. But what a presence Kevin Friedman provides UConn. Three fouls and Walcott. So that's seven fouls at that position for Washington tonight as Thalo Green, the starter, on the bench with four. Well, they got a push off on Hamilton as Watts frustrated him. So important to play within yourself. Jimmy threw a little begging. No cup, but nevertheless, you look for a little assistance from the referee. Three personals now on Richard Hamilton, the sophomore from Coatesville, Pennsylvania, small mill town in southeastern Pennsylvania. Nine team fouls, so it's a one and one, but the next foul against Connecticut means two shots the rest of the way for Washington. The Washington Huskies have still been called for just four fouls this half. Watts, the junior from Kirkland, Washington, just outside Seattle. What a beautiful area. Gorgeous, gorgeous campus right along Lake Washington, the football stadium right there on the lake. I think the people that have gone to the NCAA basketball tournament there have just enjoyed it so often. Beautiful scenery. And Slick enjoying the look of his youngster right now. Scenic to him. Under nine minutes remaining, Connecticut cannot put away the number 11 seed, Washington, El Amin, well short from three-point land, and the free ball came down to Walcott, who did a great job boxing out the much bigger Freeman. Now a little bit of a settle there by El Amin. Run your stuff, you can always get that. Watts had it blocked by Juan McCullough there to put the ball back up into the bucket. And Juan got a little shot in the face there. The, again, the catching ability of McCullough. And he played hockey as a youngster, Sean. Gretzky was his hero. Of course, Wayne had a pretty good, or still does, set of hands. McCullough grew up in Winnipeg, Manitoba. As a nine-year-old, scored 76 goals in his youth hockey league. But then they started checking. He said he wanted no part of hockey. <laughs> well, he's intelligent. With that body, he was open. Fair game. Washington with a chance to tie it with three. Walcott didn't see the pass coming from Watts. You must see the ball even if you're screening. And Chris Walcott apologizing. And what a tough trip. Got to get some shots. Walcott been outstanding tonight. But he did turn his head and the pass went right by him. He goes to the bench. Femmerling's back in for the first time that I can recall, Bill, in the end of the tournament, the two seven-footers playing together. As starters together for most of the season. Kremlin taking out the starting line with three games to go. They won all three to get into the tournament. McCullough rebounds the miss by Hamilton. Well, they've been right up on the jump shot on both guards. That's the high low. How about that's the high high? <laughs> Kremlin made the right decision. You can see the gears turning inside his head as he. Passed up the shot once and twice and finally made the foul line jumper. It's a one-point Connecticut lead. Elamine lost the ball as he ran into Finneling. And watch with great patience as Dion Luton had leaked out. Didn't gamble. An eight-nothing run for Washington. They can take the lead for the first time tonight. There's the Twin Towers, more like the Sonic Boom, these two over there. Tough match for Freeman. Matched up with a seven-footer, Femmerling. Watts for the lead. Rebound controlled by Hamilton. That was a heart rebound by Richard. Jake and McCullough tee it up. Now they relax. 
They both look exhausted. Six and a half minutes remaining. 20 on the shot clock. Hamilton fouled before the shot. Femmerling called for his first personal. Five team foul, so not a shooting opportunity for Hamilton. Timeout. Well, Sean McDonough, early in the year, you mentioned they played together. Well, this is just a gorgeous use of the high-low. For Washington, seven-foot screening for seven-foot, and as you said, he questioned himself a little bit, and then didn't hesitate at the end. And it's amazing how Bob Bender has made these adjustments during the course of the year. Started convinced they played big, then went small, and now big the second half. The next foul for Connecticut means Washington shoots two the rest of the way. Each team with plenty of timeouts. And it's still Femmerling and McCullough. The Twin Towers paired together. Hamilton, the miss. Bosco over the back of McCullough for the rebound. The big one. And how about them making Hamilton change the trajectory? Good reaction. Bellamine to Hamilton with Freeman, Bosco, and more. Regular starting five on the court with six minutes left for UConn. Hamilton, that's a three. Well, he set it up nicely. They hangst off the high post, and he lost Donald Watts. And we could look back at this stage as a key part of the ball game. Watts missed an elbow jumper with a chance to give Washington its first lead, and it was answered by a three by Hamilton. Now Freeman doing a better job not letting Femley touch it. Craig Bosco a block on Luton. What a beautiful read by Jake Bosco. His first block shot, Luton with a strong drive to the bucket, and then Bosco swatted it. Same play. Couldn't believe there was a whistle. He is clever. Khalid Elamin on the baseline in traffic, able to find people with the big bodies. Three fouls on McCullough. Six team fouls. Voskel at the line. Hey, Jake will sleep tomorrow. He's telling me today his mom injured her shoulder in rotator cuff operation. She's back at home, Karen. And you noted the father and brothers here. They could load up a front line, incidentally. And Jake has provided quite a lift. That block and just banging heads with McCullough all game long. Taking down to five minutes left. Washington got within one and had the ball. Now they're down six with the ball. Watts told us last week in Washington, D.C., he doesn't enjoy it when the two seven-footers are there together. Luton, that's a two because it's tougher to drive for the perimeter players with both seven-footers in the game for Washington. And Luton didn't drive. He used that big screen, the big body, to slide behind. you got to go over the top on Deion Luton. Good Great anticipation by Fennelin, and he saved it. And Ricky Moore lets it go out of bounds. Oh, nice footwork, didn't he? 16 size shoe <laughs> and the ability of the open floor here. What happened in the service, Sean? They wouldn't let him. They didn't have boots for him. Well, during the summer of 96, <laughs> he had to perform his mandatory military service as a German citizen. He spent 10 weeks on a tour of duty with the German army. Briefly went through maneuvers in sneakers because they didn't have size 16 army boots. Tough on the slopes, but pretty good on the open floor there. He has given them a lift playing the big guys together. Green, and an offensive foul called against Connecticut. Freeman, they had a little double screen, and you just can't move. You don't get a shot. Looking on in disbelief, and Jimmy sees this parade to the free throw line, and that's going to let Washington hang around. Because it was not a player control foul, it will result in shooting, and it's 10 team fouls on Connecticut, so it's a two shot opportunity for Donald Watts. For two shots. He makes 
the first. He has 18 points. But Donald Watt sounded a little like us. He didn't want to go back to Seattle because he knew he'd have to go back and get those exams if he didn't have the study week the week before. Uh, so the advantage to Professor. Seven out of eight from the line is Donald Watts. Washington back within two. Well, win or lose, you have to admire the Washington Huskies for what they have accomplished in this tournament. Now, this is the play that they usually have Hamilton on the same side. Turn the corner and then find them. Freeman to Hamilton. Might have used his free arm to clear on Watts. He missed the shot, trembling the rebound. Two to tie, three for the first lead of the night for Washington with under four minutes left. Nice job by Jake there, trying to establish McCullough. McCullough guarded by Voskel. Luton with plenty of time on the shot clock. It's at 17. Luton stutter step. And it'll be Washington ball. They're fortunate to retain possession. 13 seconds left on the shot clock for Bob Bender's team when we come back. Connecticut by two, three and a half minutes remaining. Time for the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Look at these free throw numbers. Washington 87%, Connecticut 90%. Each team has missed just two free throws. Get all your tournament team sortable stats, real-time scores, in-depth information at cbs.sportsline.com. McCullough very tough on this inbounds play. Luton, tough pass for Watts. You see the time on the shot clock at 10. Two to tie, three for the lead for Washington. And Jake really keeping him away from the low box, McCullough. For the lead, Watts. That was a very long three, so a couple of times. Watts has taken the shot that would have given Washington its first lead of the night, and on both occasions he's come up empty. They were trying to establish McCullough. He's got to go box to box. they got to reverse the ball when Jake jams him up the lane like that. Hamilton travel. Twelve turnovers committed by the Huskies. Uh, Jimmy's been very subdued. I mean, even that particular play, usually you get upset. Good self-control. He's got to have composure going down the stretch. UConn has accomplished just about everything else it could accomplish under Calhoun except get to the final four. Foul. Femmerling trying to handle the pass. He was being bounced around along the baseline. Richard Hamilton now with four personal fouls. And Femmerling around 61%. Not a high or efficient number. Never really himself tonight, I didn't think. Hamilton, some spurts, some signs, but fatigue due to the cold exhibited itself. Femmerling missed the first. So Hamilton, the Big East Player of the Year, UConn's leading scorer. One foul away from disqualification. One out of two for Femmerling. Connecticut by one. 2.51 remaining. And a timeout, a full timeout called by Jim Calhoun. With 2.42 left. UConn 69, Washington 68. 2.42 remaining here in Greensboro. Connecticut leads Washington by one. In the other game going on tonight, Arizona's lead now one over Maryland midway through the second half. We'll take you to the finish of that game. We're done here. Tomorrow night's action begins at 7.39. Syracuse and Duke. Stanford against Purdue at 7.55. UCLA and Kentucky at 9.59. And Valparaiso against Rhode Island. At approximately 10:15, and it's all guard oriented. It might be a nice time to shake Jake Vasco loose on the box, let him go up strong. But they've been settling for jump shots. Shot clock down to eight. Pick and roll. Alamine the scoop got no rim. Out of bounds with two seconds to shoot for Connecticut. And plenty of time for a catch and a bounce, Sean. It's usually a pop to the corner for Hamilton. Alamine to inbound. And a foul. The last thing Washington wanted with UConn up against it. One second on the shot clock. And the foul.
Colin Femmerling is his second. And it was just a good read. Everybody popped and opened the lane. Not good defense by Washington. Hammond will come right into your screen with nobody protecting. It was contact, caused the loose and a chance to get two on the foul line, but just faulty defense in preparing for the inbounds. Wooten did nothing guarding the inbounder. Mm -hmm. Hamilton has to be nervous now every time he hears a whistle where he's involved in the contact because he has four fouls. 17 points now for Richard Hamilton. He made two. Gives Hamilton a little close. McQuincio Hartnett comes in. Ooh, Hamilton collided with McCullough. And then they, he thought it was on purpose that Jim Calhoun just making sure. McCullough got tangled up with Hamilton as Hamilton went to the bench. McCullough gave Hamilton a look. Jim Calhoun stepped onto the court and shook hands with McCullough and gave him a little pat as if to say it's okay. First time a guy found going to the bench. <laughs> Watts using a Femmerling screen. Candidate for Femmerling. Whoa, anxious moments for Washington and that hung on the rim before dropping for Femmerling. And Watts with the courage to make the giveaway. Pretty look. Now Jim Calhoun uses a 20-second timeout just to get Richard Hamilton back into the game. He wants him in for offense. He doesn't want him to get the fifth foul on defense. Uh, it's an international game. They know how to play all over the world. Here's a little open and roll to the goal. The hands and brought it down on the pump fake as Jake slides by. Nice little play. UConn in the double bonus. Washington with 17 fouls in the one and one situation. Now with just one full timeout, the arrow favors Washington. Alice Bender, the wife of Coach Bob Bender, expecting their second child due in August. Ricky Moore guarded by Luke Elamine. Dangerously close to the midcourt line, guarded by Wooten. Elamine for three. Bosco crossing the boards over the back of Watts. And McCullough, the officials pointing at McCullough. Apparently he'll be the free throw shooter as Bosco just picked up his fourth foul. And the defense forced the jump shot. See Jake aggressive in nature. You like your big guy going to the rim that way. But the handling of the pick and roll. Sensational. Forced the deep thrust by El Amin. And it doesn't make much difference whether it was McCullough or Watts. They're both right around 70 and 71 percent for the year. Washington is even at 71. McCullough could give the Washington Huskies their first lead with 129 remaining. No. Freeman the rebound. And UConn's had difficulty in their half-court offense. They got to start it a little bit earlier, so they have some options at the end. Well, I mean, we're nowhere near the same player here in the second half. Washington's done a much better job on him defensively. And in particular, work. here's a little circle play. They haven't run it all game. Shot clock 12. Game tied for the third time. Freeman to break the tie. Blow by Fenley from behind. Hamilton drops it in. Just not quick enough to the basketball, Washington. Initially, a good stop. Under a minute remaining, the number two seed in the East in a real battle. We avoided the temptation to say dogfight with the Huskies of Washington. Out of bounds, last touch by Elamine. 21 on the shot clock, 44 and a half in the game. And Watts put it out in front. And to leave Elamine right on the money here. Tries to get the call with that personality. And Don Rutledge not buying. Timeout Washington. Sean McDonough, Bill Raftery, Andrea Joyce at the Greensboro Coliseum. 44 seconds left. Connecticut leads by two. Washington has not had the lead at any point in this game. Connecticut down to one timeout. And in the double bonus, and the arrow also favors Washington. The Huskies' biggest deficit was nine, but just more than ten minutes remaining. Well, they got the two big guys in. They got to use a do a high low. Otherwise, it jams it up unless they pick and roll with the bounce. They go for Luton on a double. Donald Watts. That's for the lead. Washington 
Washington leads for the first time of the game. Timeout, Connecticut. 29 seconds left. Has that been solid all game long? Watch the answer. High voltage, Washington. Washington took its first lead seconds ago. 74-73, 29 seconds left. Donald Watts, the huge three. Now Connecticut is out of timeout, so they must inbound the ball cleanly here. And they do to El Amin. He likes to dribble drive using a high post pick. Hamilton off the basketball, getting himself set. One floor, Sean, try and turn the corner. And spreading the court for El Amin. Ten seconds remaining. El Amin off the Bosco. He was blessed. The shot wouldn't drop. Hamilton! No! Another tip! No! Hamilton off the Bosco! Yes! Yes! Connecticut wins! Jake, a little bang, just staying after it. Guys keeping it alive. Hamilton, no problems with the head call. The sinuses are clear and open. Oh, what a knockdown in the history of UConn basketball. The ability to hesitate freezes the D. The dish, and this one does not go. I think Lita got a little piece of that. Unbelievable reaction. The fadeaway, nothing more. A little bit of a rattler, but a cotton swab delight. And the rest, terrific, youthful exuberance. Bob Bender was a fraction of a second away from the Elite Eight. This team deserved a better fate tonight. What a wonderful performance by Washington. They trailed for almost the entire game. And they were a split second away from advancing. Their season ends at 20 and 10 in the Sweet 16. And Connecticut advances to Saturday and the Elite Eight. to his condition. North Carolina and Connecticut, one versus two in the Elite Eight, Saturday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern time. The winner goes to the final four. Donald Watts hit the shot that gave Washington the lead briefly. He had 22, and Richard Hamilton again tonight, as he did in the games against Early Dickinson in Indiana. The big shots down the stretch, and they're still tending to Kevin Freeman. Greg Gumbel will update you on his situation later. And let's rejoin Greg now. All right, Sean, thanks very much. So the Huskies, a loser. UConn, the Huskies, a winner. Washington, the loser. Meanwhile, time to take you to Maryland.